These takes are always really amusing because they are actually so close to getting it. Because yes, something of a previous generation's notion of manhood and masculinity is being lost. But what they're missing is the historical context, because this is not a bug. This is not a problem unique to this particular moment. This is actually a feature, a, a part of the design of masculinity. Whenever I see content from someone claiming that men aren't masculine anymore, or there's an attack on masculinity, or being masculine is this thing that existed in a past time, I wonder if there's a sudden influx of perceived effeminate or queer people around them, and why that is. That's not my reality, and I doubt it's theirs. More on this later. But I get the feeling that this would be taken as an affront to their masculinity too. Seems like feeling attacked, getting offended, and sensitivity are hallmarks to traditional masculinity. But whatever. Tangent time. Do you remember the Latin explosion? I promise this is going somewhere. What do you mean no? How old are... Well, in 1999, pop music got hits from Ricky Martin, Jennifer Lopez, and Enrique Iglesias that topped the charts, and it was called the Latin explosion. Yeah, three people constituted an explosion of an ethnicity. Anyways, in a country like these United States, I'm getting the feeling that something like masculinity is being threatened by sheer visibility of people who don't live by the idea of arbitrary and artificial male-female behavior. See, it's not that generations of the past were more masculine. It's that you couldn't see or hear the LGBTQ plus communities, for instance. Even with the most masculine of traits, going to war or something, believe it or not, the silent generation questioned the masculinity of the greatest generation, or maybe they're the same. Actually, every generation questions the ones that comes after theirs. We were complaining that men are too feminine back in 2004. Also in 1984, 1965, 1950, 1940, 1932. You can see that we were always blaming women for it too. 1922. Uh, 1910, 1902, 1993, 1886. And just for funsies, here's Hippocrates making the same complaint in 400 BCE. As an aside, if you want to see these in detail, just go to Twitter and look up Paul Ferry. This current thing about traditional masculinity, sure, could have its roots in the prevalence of the term toxic masculinity. What it means and where it comes from, hey, some are apparently too masculine to read what doctors and researchers and psychologists have to say about it. But hey, I wonder if this whole thing is because, say, masculine men notice that RuPaul is hosting like three shows, you know? They can see the LGBTQ plus community now, and they were always there, but didn't feel comfortable with identifying or expressing themselves the way they want to until now. Is that the problem? People want queer communities to suppress themselves, but masculinity, traditional or otherwise, is still there. Again, for the men and women complaining, if there's not many effeminate presenting and queer people around them, then whenever they say, where are all the masculine men? I'm going to assume that they see this video of a big butch man taking care of his wife and daughters, but wearing a tutu as a threat, or that they watch RuPaul's Drag Race, but it's okay, man. For Rebel HQ, I'm Jeff Wiggins. My architect knows Japanese. Because if there is one consistent feature in all these iterations of masculinity, it's that it is never achievable. It is only ever aspirational. And that achievement is particularly impossible when it always lies in the past. For more from the Young Turks, stay right here. To see additional content from yours truly, click on the Jeff Wiggins hashtag. You can also find me on my YouTube channel, We Gonna Be Alright. Thanks for watching.